my name is Tai Khan, and I will be doing a little presentation for you guys on this uh, B profiler. I hope everybody can hear me fine. Uh, Holly, is every can you hear me fine? I can. Yes, yeah, thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, so I think we will start. Um, I work for a construction company um, as a pre-construction manager, and I've been using the D profiler software for almost the uh, last four or five years, on and off. Uh, when I started using, uh, or when I was introduced to the software, initially I was very excited, especially when I saw the 3D modeling uh, part of it. And that's how I started. I started building the 3D model, and I thought it was pretty cool because you can see uh, you're building the conceptual level in a 3D model. And that's what I was using it for uh, major, you know, mostly um, not using the cost part of it. Uh, but then later I realized that it was not just a 3D modeling software because if you just need a 3D modeling software, you could just use uh, SketchUp or some other tools that are available. Uh, the main purpose of this software is basically create conceptual estimates uh, that are integrated with your 3D model. And then I started uh, basically focusing more uh, learning about the cost part of it too. Uh, every time I create a model, I learn something new, uh, so I still consider myself a student of the software. Um, and I always like to see how I can use it more effectively. Over the time, I have uh, used it for uh, industrial manufacturing uh, facilities, retail, uh, office spaces, uh, dormitory building, hotel projects. And I always enjoyed doing all these different type of projects. Um, the company that I work for now, uh, they specialize in healthcare. So there's a lot of healthcare products uh, that we do estimate and do program level budgets too. And my previous uh, work experience was not a lot in the healthcare industry. So it was, it was nice to have this now that I can learn more about uh, hospital buildings and because hospital buildings I believe are more uh, complex and complicated uh, when it comes to construction because they have a lot of different pieces and you cannot just apply a flat square foot number to the whole building because every area, every part of the building is totally different as far as cost wise. So I will just give you an overview of uh, what I uh, how I use this software and what I have learned and share my experience uh, and if that could be beneficial uh, for everybody else. Whenever I work for a company, uh, the first thing that I notice that every company does their estimates in a little different manner and you have to get familiarized with how they do the estimate. I will give you an example that the first company that I worked for, they would uh, quantify their footings in linear feet and foundation walls in square feet. The, the second company that I worked for, they wanted, they did it in cubic yards. Then another company that I worked for, because they uh, sell performed concrete, they want a little bit more detail on that. So every company does it differently and I had to modify uh, my estimate styles or the way I would set up estimates based on the company culture so all the management uh, can understand uh, how I estimated uh, all these items. Even though uh, if you do it differently, still the end cost is the same, but in order to create that understanding with the management and their procedures, it's easier to just uh, you know, comply with their uh, method. Um, so that was the first hurdle that I always uh, faced. Um, then the profiler comes with um, cost database um, that comes with RS means if you want to buy RS means or you can create your own database. 
Now, creating your own database is a very good approach. The only issue with that one is very time consuming because you have to create everything from scratch. So you have to have a dedicated staff to uh, create that whole database from scratch. Or what I found beneficial was if you get RS means, you can create a hybrid solution where you can create your own database because uh, RS means can give you 70 or 80 percent of what you need and the rest you can customize and create your own uh, templates or you can create your own database. Uh, so that would, I found that more uh, productive. I will show you basically uh, how I do that hybrid solution. Um, so what I do is basically when I do a conceptual estimate for a building, I try to create, uh, use that estimate as a future template. So if I did build uh, a manufacturing facility and I created a conceptual estimate using RS means and also tweaking uh, some of the estimate line items that just applies to that building, I will save that project and I can use that project over and over for my future manufacturing facilities as a template. Because there's a feature in um, in D profiler where you can import components and what you can do is basically you can uh, bring in your old projects and you can just match the properties of that building that you did before and it creates all the line items and applies it to the new model that you created. So it will still extract the quantities from the new model but all the estimate line items are basically coming from your template. Um, D profiler, I found it very useful for client communication and how we present our estimates to the client. Uh, when we deal with clients, there are a lot of clients that understand the construction process and some of them are fairly new to the construction process. So when we give them a 10, 20 pages estimate, it's hard for them to digest all that information and visualize because they are not working in the construction industry to really visualize all that information. So in order to show them that estimate more visually, e profiler can be very useful and they can understand basically where the cost is coming from and how you are building the building too. Um, there are some nice features uh, that I recently found and actually useful. Um, Again, as I said, that I always learn new things in D-Profiler, and recently I started using uh, uh, these features that are, you can put images and notes in your, uh, with your line items and your estimate, which I will show you uh, when I come to the software, and I can show you how useful they can be in the communication part. Um, usually, when you are setting up a conceptual estimate with RS means database, it gives you a shell uh, price which includes your structure and your basic uh, MEP, but it does not include all the interior finishes and that's about 30% of your cost. So you can go and set up those interior finishes and I will show you uh, in the program basically how, uh, what my approach is uh, using that interior finishes. And again, you can, uh, for every area that you apply interior finishes, you can uh, do a little bit more detail MEP for that area too. Uh, program budgeting, uh, we do a lot of program budgeting for the healthcare building and that was very challenging because uh, one, you need experience in healthcare projects. Second, you need to have a very good historical database in order to use uh, that database in the programming budget. Uh, I've been having a little hard time when I was doing some programming budgeting because I didn't have too much experience in the healthcare projects. And the company that I worked for, they didn't have a proper database system where I could pull out all that information. So again, a nice database system uh, is very useful um, in order to use Deep Profiler too. So if you guys don't have a proper database system, then I believe it's time to have a database system where you keep all your historical database. Um, with the healthcare projects, as you guys know, that every area uh, is 
is totally different. Like if there are examination rooms, if operating rooms, or you know, penthouse, a lobby area, every area is finished totally different. Uh, their electrical, mechanical requirements are totally different. So that's why I basically what I do is start defining the areas, and then I can create those small boxes and price each box, and then put those small boxes in the bigger box, and that creates your whole project cost. And cost assemblies uh, can be created with your historical database that if you have done any project in the past, then probably you can get that data that how much an operating room costs and what are those elements that add up to that cost. Um, again, you know, building shell is easily, can, can be easily uh, created with the deep profiler program, but the interior elements are the key which you have to create based on your historical database. And all the interior finishes in MEP too. I will give you, uh, and show you as an example, this uh, recently I was working on a project. This is, uh, this is a manufacturing facility um, with the load-bearing precast walls and an EPDM roof uh, with some loading docks, um, and there's an office space too. Uh, the office area uh, was basically built with metal stud backup and brick, and then we have typical uh, exterior glazing and EPDM roofing on that one too. In this one, what I did was, uh, as in the manufacturing facility, that was fairly simple. It's a big box and you don't have a lot of finishes in that one. But the office space, we had to create some interior uh, areas. And if you look at these boxes, um, so I, what I did was I created these boxes, these green boxes. You can see these are offices. And then this one is a corridor area. This big green box is an open office space. So then we have some break room, some toilets and locker rooms. So I defined these boxes and I, actually in the tabular view you can see all these boxes are generated in the tabular view. And each box has its own cost. And how this cost is coming from, if you click on that, it can show you it's pre uh, basically picking up all the interior finishes with the uh, interior partitions, the floor finishes, and the ceiling finishes. Now what you can do is, if it was a little bit more complex building or complex area, then I could add uh, some specialty items and casework line items and uh, more expanded MEP uh, for this box too. But I was just showing you this as an example. If I needed to expand a little bit more, I could do that. Um, the images that I, and notes that I was talking about, I will show you a very good example on this one. Um, if I come here, and if I wanted to talk about this big open space, uh, office space with the owner, I could just go and go to the properties of that and just see what am I mean by this open office space and what will be a typical finish level for this open office area. Now we can tell them, okay, we got we uh, figured uh, carpet and acoustical ceilings and then we have wall, vinyl wall covering or paint on the wall. And oh, by the way, these demountable partitions are not part of that estimate. These are provided by the owner. But at least you will get an idea um, that what we are talking about. So these, especially with uh, healthcare projects, when you're dealing with operating room, exam room, you can have these images. And it, not only it helps in communicating your assumptions to the owner, but also it helps you in your estimate too. That when you look at the picture, you make sure that you picked up all the items that you need to. Um, so sometimes, you know, when you're dealing with a lot of information, you may miss something. But when you're looking at the picture, then 
you can see, okay, oh, did I pick the doors? Did I pick the, the exit signs? Or did I pick uh, this type of ceiling? Or any elements or casework that is needed for that specific area. So I find it very um, helpful, especially in communicating your assumption uh, to the owner. Also, uh, the 3D uh, site analysis is very helpful. Um, I found that very helpful, especially when we are dealing with clients that want to put their buildings on different sites and want to see how much each site is going to cost. This project that I am showing you, this one we have an uh, on-site detention system too. And with the 3D site analysis, you can see the grading part of that and also gives me all the cut and fill that I need for setting up this site. So I don't know how many of you are using this uh, uh, part of the deep provider, but I find it very useful. Um, I used the mechanical, uh, the energy analysis too that gives you a uh, little operating cost for each building. Um, Back here. Uh, so if you needed to do energy analysis, you can always come here and it, it's another useful tool if you wanted to show owner a little bit more information because that energy cost basically reflects what kind of cladding that you have used in your building orientation. Um, so it is an extra information that owner can analyze too for their future expenses too. Um, again, what makes you, it's it's all about moving from uh, being an ordinary to extraordinary. So this extra makes you an extraordinary uh, estimator, where you give more information to the owner. Um, I know there's a piece where you can uh, set up your sequencing for the projects too, which you can set up your schedule or attach it to the building which I believe is there still needs to be a little bit more development need to be done in that part where I could really see um, when my schedule is set up, set up with the building, I really want to see how the building is built in each phase. Uh, at this point, I mean, this program doesn't give a lot of, uh, I mean, visualization as far as attaching the schedule, but I believe that is something technologies can improve on later on. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty much uh, it for as far as I, how I use it. Um, if you, anybody has any questions, I can uh, I would be happy to answer those questions. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to type them into the question box and Ty Moore will be more than happy to answer those for you. If not, thank you so much for joining us today for this broadcast of our D-Profiler webinar series. We will be sending out the recording hopefully later this afternoon. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody uh, for joining and listening to me. Um, again, I find this platform very useful in sharing your experience with this software and uh, we can learn from each other because I always learn something new uh, every day when I use this software and uh, there's another thing that I found useful that comes in deep profiler program too that there's a document uh, a word document that basically is connected to your model and all your work <laughs> assumptions that tra get translated into that document and it creates a nice read of uh, document for the owner to read too. Um, I can basically show you as an example what I have, what I did on this project. You can see what I was talking about. So this document you can see um, it defines the project goal, uh, what's this each building for footage and then I kind of little customize this part. Uh, but again, it, the rest 
it, it is coming from the program and you can always customize or tweak a little bit of information. But this is a good example of giving some read of uh, document to the owner if he cannot uh, remember everything that you said in the presentation, he can always go back and read this document and make sure that he understands all your assumptions that you set up for this uh, estimate. Thank you, Timor. Are you able to see the questions that are coming in, or do you need me to read them to you? Oh, uh, well, I don't see any questions. Uh, so <laughs> if you can tell me. I would be happy to answer those questions if I know the answers. <laughs> sure. We have about four questions as of now. Um, okay. So the first question is, how is the model building generated? How is the model building generated? Yes. Um, Dwayne, oh. do you want to clarify what you mean by that? Maybe while he's doing that, I'll go on to the next one. It's how do you embed the pictures? Okay. Uh, first question, I believe if my uh, if I understood it right, uh, basically is asking how do you create generate a model from scratch. There are different approaches that you can use to generate a model <coughs> at the conceptual level. There's scenarios. Okay. One scenario number one, we do not have any drawings any layout to use. Uh, so basically what you do is you can import the, the site or if you do not have the site information you can still uh, create this uh, model uh, from the scratch. Um, now second scenario is maybe you have a site layout plan or a very uh, preliminary uh, floor plan in which I had that uh, and what I, uh, let me show you what I used. This picture. So I had this. So I had this layout, the site layout, which I used to generate this building plan. Uh, but in case if you do not have one, then you can always. It's fairly simple creating a box, and uh, there's different ways of generating new one I can show you real quick. Uh, you can just give it a name and uh, there's quick ones with the, using the wizard you can create if it's a, just a box or if it's a rectangle you can set up all these parameters and you can generate that and then you can set up okay what is the exterior cladding type you can use that and it will be generated it's just a few clicks and you got that. But if you want a customized approach, uh, then you can each actually go just finish that from here and just create your own massing the way you want. So it's, it's fairly simple basically and then you can clad it the way you want if it's you want. Now, as far as cladding wise, you can at the initial person, uh, if you do not have an idea what actually owner wants, you can set up uh, a combination of, uh, like if you want 70% brick and 20% uh, glass, you can also set up that uh, combination or uh, you can customize each cladding type too. So it's, it's fairly simple. Um, again, it depends on how much information you have and you can use that to generate these models. And as far as uh, the second question, when they talked about how we, uh, what was that one? Embed the images. Basically, when you come here and you have uh, this tabular view, and in any uh, tab, for example, let's say parking, if I wanted to, here you, there's a 
column chooser option that you can use, and there's an images and node that you can use here. And then once you click here, so I wanted to show how my parking area is going to look like, so I can always come here and basically if I don't have anything right now, but I can always uh, actually import the image in this one. I you can load here and you can just go into the pictures. Um, let me show you basically. I have a picture. I'll show you. So I'm just going to take you. This one is an example that I can use. Maybe. So now you see here, now this one shows the image. So it's, it's fairly simple. Uh, same thing with the notes, you double click here and if you wanted to make a specific assumptions about this parking lot, you can set up all these notes and these can be exported into Excel or Word document the way you want. Uh, any other questions? Yes, we have um, several more. So in the model that you showed, are you applying two building types, one for the manufacturing area and one for the office area? Yes, yes. Both the buildings have different structures type. Uh, the, in the building one, this is a, a load-bearing precast wall as compared to the, the office building, which is steel-supported building with uh, exterior uh, metal stud framing and breakdown. Perfect. And then someone asked how long it took you to create the model and the clarification? Uh, well, again, as I said, Initially, when I my approach is when I do a, a unique or new project that I'm doing for the first time, it takes a little uh, time up front uh, to create all my line items. But in this case, it didn't take me. I, I think it took me three four hours to create the model and the estimate because I already had. Uh, previously done a manufacturing facility with office building, so I just used that template to bring all my line items. So the time it took was basically generating the model, and the rest was pretty fairly simple. Great. Thank you. And then um, we have a question that I think was touched on before, but it says, can you override the database unit cost with your own cost history? Yes you can do that. Uh, and you can always change anything in the cost items and then it lets it asks you if you want to add that to a database and it will add to the database. So it, it basically let me show you as an example. Uh, if I wanted to come here and if I wanted to change anything here, I wanted to make this three bucks square foot. And then if you see here, it says create database assembly. So you can, if you do that, it will uh, ask you if you want to create a new one or you can just or write over that one too. But I would always do a new one so that you know basically this is something that you created and you can use it for yourself. Perfect. It's, it is all customizable to whatever you want it to be. Um, the next question yeah. is, for interior work, do you use density functions to develop the finished quantities, or do you direct input quantities from history? Well, um, when, when you create these boxes for uh, interiors, I'll show you. Um, for example, I created this box, so if I show you the properties of this box, it will, if you look at on this side, it gives you what's the square foot floor area, uh, floor area of this uh, box, uh, and of course the ceiling going to be the same. And it also calculates the four walls area on that one perimeter. And then also when you go here, this quantity is coming from, so it's basically you can always customize these formulas, but this area is picking up that area of the box. So it's basically bringing all the, the quantities from that little box that you generated. 
So if, for example, I I will give you a good example. If um, if we wanted a door per area, or maybe if it's a big area, you say, okay, well, I need uh, I want to create a line item, and I want to basically have a door per 500 square feet. So basically, you can create a line item. You can create a line item, um, and then I can say, okay, doors. Uh, and then you can call it each. And then when it comes in, I say, okay, well, that will include my hollow metal frame, door, and hardware. Now my quantity formula should be, I want the area divided by, well, it depends on how many, uh, every square, 200 square feet, 500 square feet, it's just depending on the density of the building too. Uh, so I said, okay, well, this is my formula. And then I create a classification for it. So, And as you're doing this time war, it came in, how do you avoid duplication of quantities when using adjacent boxes? Well, uh, the duplication of quantities, basically you probably are talking about as far as uh, interior partitions, because um, when you create a box and you have a common wall that is between those boxes, so basically what I do in that case is if I have to figure out interior partitions, I would go and just create formula that basically I want the wall area uh, divided by two or divided by three. So basically it's picking up the three sides, not the one side. So if one side is common, so I can say, okay, divide by three. So that will, or basically uh, the third, uh, three-fourths of the area is basically I want to include in there and not the one-fourth. So you can always set up that way the way you want it. Or you can set up, okay, well, okay, so it will basically divide it in half or whichever way you want it. So. Okay, and then we have, going a little bit of a different direction, have you constructed a parking garage? Um, someone had a recent problem where he created a few garages, and when uh -huh. he went to incorporate cost, it summed the area of the floor areas into the roof area rather than separating the floor areas by actual floors after he applied the grid. Have you run into uh, this problem before? Yes. Actually, I did run into that problem, and I learned a uh, friend from uh, Black Technologies helped me with that uh, situation where I had four floors in the building, and basically it was also including the roof as, in, as a floor, too. So it's basically... Uh, comes back to when you have the structure. Um, so when you set up your grid lines, so there's in the properties of the plenum room where you can see that whenever you have anything bigger than three foot, because uh, when we set up this parapet or this grid line, for the roof, basically use as a parapet wall. But if I increase that to eight foot or ten foot, then what it will do is basically it will think that this is another floor, and that's where you have a problem. So you have to make sure that your uh, grid line is within two to three foot, uh, whatever is the plenum room um, set up to. So otherwise, it will think that it's another floor. So. And Brent probably can, uh, if Brent was joining and he could ex explain that a little bit more than I do, but uh, mm -hmm. this is how uh, we separate those four from the roof. Great, thank you. Um, Clifton, if that does not answer your question, please let me know. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. Do you have any healthcare examples you could show? Um. 
Well, <laughs> that's putting you on the spot. <laughs> Just gave well, it. I, what I'm trying to do is, because you know, I started working here. Uh, it's my second month here, and we. I just recently purchased this deep robotics software, as you know. Uh, so I haven't even uh, gotten the whole complete software package. I was just showing you from the, the trial version that I was using of the software. So our IT has not installed the whole version where I could have the whole RSME database and everything. But maybe in the future, in a month or two, because uh, my plan is to create all these uh, templates for different types of areas. Um, and using all the historical database of the company for the healthcare projects. And then I will create all these areas, including operating rooms, examination rooms, lobby, and you know, all the, uh, the fundamental areas, um, and price them separately and create these rooms. Uh, basically, when you come here, um, let me show you real quick, basically, what my approach is going to be. Um, but I will create these plenum rooms. So if I create a plenum room, uh, here, for example, in this case, so I need to create one, and I can call it anything and it's okay. Now, the second part, what you do is basically uh, come to tabular area, and when you create this plenum room here, now you need to add cost item to that plenum room. So what my plan is to basically create all these different areas, so operating rooms or examination rooms, so I will expand on this list and create all these lists. And basically when you um, get the RS means database, they have some information too and you can expand on those. Um, so once you create these specific areas and you can set up your own templates and then basically you have added those, whenever you are generating the conceptual estimate, all you have to do is basically bring in that box and the quantities will be updated based on that new box that you created. But your line items and all your unit costs are still going to be coming from that template. So this is what my approach is going to be. Um, and maybe in the future, in a few months, when if I do another webinar, I'm more uh, focused on healthcare projects and I can uh, show you more of that. Sounds good. And then we have a question about importing models from other software. Have you personally ever imported a Revit model using our plugin? Yes, I did. Um, it's not very uh, smooth. Um, I have uh, imported SketchUp model and also uh, imported Revit model. Basically, I have exported the profiler model to a Revit program to beautify it for uh, our proposal uh, and for our client. Uh, but uh, but it's it's not that hard. But again, I still believe that there's still uh, there's a little bit more development needed as far as the import and export wise, because uh, it does not bring all the elements sometime, and uh, you have to tweak it a little bit more. Exactly. And then one final question. Actually, sorry, two. The images you showed earlier. For the office space, I believe, do those appear in the in a report? Uh, well, it it depends on how you set up your uh, reports. Um, you can export the whole uh, D profiler uh, into Excel, and then you can do it that way. Or the, the the document that I showed you, what you can also do is basically. If you were talking about something, okay, well, exterior walls, and you wanted to show this is how it's going to look like, or if you have special metal wall panels and you wanted to show that picture, you can always add it to that uh, document. Right now, um, I don't think there's an automated way of importing all those images right where it belongs. So you have to do a little bit of uh, extra effort to actually put it in the document, uh, but maybe in the future, I believe uh, there can be a development that can be done to the D provider where you can import. And again, that is a question for somebody that is a developer and D provider. There might be a way, but uh, I don't know at this point. Yes, and I just want to let the audience know that D profiler is based on our 
client suggestion. So if you ever have a suggestion, please feel free to reach out to our support team and just shoot us an email of how you think we can improve or what functionality you would like to see. Um, the one final question is, what is required to import a CAD file to start a model? Yes, you can always import a CAD file. Um, I have imported a CAD file. Uh, when you come here, it gives you the list of uh, all the, the files that you can import. I have uh, imported a DWG file, an image, which is a PDF file. And when I talk about those templates, those are basically uh, the components. So if you have done a project, you can import those as a component, and then you can match properties in order to bring all the line items that you need for that building in this uh, model. Sounds good. Well, I think we covered all the questions. Thank you so much for um, being interactive and asking those questions and for you answering them, Time War. And um, we'll go ahead and close out the webinar now. As I mentioned, I will be sending out a recording, hopefully later this afternoon, and it will also be available on our YouTube channel. That's good. And thank you, everybody, um, again, for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, present uh, my experience and I hope to uh, learn from uh, everybody else in the future too when they present their experience or share their experience. Uh, thank you everybody.